Every coach has told you that you need to warm up properly before starting a workout. But why is this the case and how does your physiology change after warming up? Let's find out the optimal warm up for your workout in this little experiment. Good, so today's experiment is very straightforward. I will do a six minute MRAP, so that means as many reps as possible for six minutes, of six burpee box jump overs, 15 calories on the row, and 20 meter weighted lunges. And what I will do is first, I will go straight after this introduction, I'll go straight into it, all right? No warm up. Then after I've done the work, I rest 30 minutes, warm up again, and do exactly the same workout where I try to aim for the same amount of reps, so the same amount of total work in the whole MRAP. I will be measuring my physiology by strapping on a nurse device and also a heart rate monitor. So let's see where I deoxygenate the most and how the warm up is actually affecting my physiology during this workout. All right, let's go straight into it. All right, that was actually uh, quite hard. I could feel the first round was burning quite a lot. And uh, after yeah, one round, I could settle in and, and I could push a little bit more. I almost finished three rounds. That's gonna be my goal for the second round, having a nice steady pace and trying to finish around three rounds. I was just not getting there with the lunges. Let's see how it goes. Let's go. Right, that was actually super interesting, I have to say. There was really a big difference on how I felt between the first MRAP, where I didn't warm up, and the second MRAP, where obviously I did a warm up. In the first MRAP, you really see also later in the data that I had to like get into it, right? I couldn't move that fast the first round. The rowing was slower, the burpees were slower, and also the lunges didn't feel so good. And then they came into it, uh, and then it felt better. I could actually push uh, against my threshold. The second MRAP, I felt much better. I could actually start very fast, just psychologically, I could easily move move quicker and even had to throttle down to not have too much differences between the first MRAP and the second MRAP because obviously that was uh, the goal. So let's look at the data. First, let's look at uh, the heart rate. And the heart rate, you see immediately already what is happening. In If you see here the overlay, you see that after the warm up, so the second MRAP, I start with a much higher heart rate, like 99, 98. I start the workout, so I feel ready. Uh, and then the heart rate goes up much quicker than the first MRAP. So this means that my heart is able to deliver 
faster and more oxygenated blood to my working tissues. And this is also what you then can see in the tissue oxygenation. So here you see the tissue oxygenation of the first MRAP. All right, you see an uh, initial decrease, as you would expect, and then you see the rounds, the first round, the second round, and the third round. And from the first round towards the third round, there's actually a deoxygenation. This means that the muscle oxygenation gradually decreases. So it's relatively high the first round, and then gradually always decreases. Good, so that is because um, initially, I cannot move that fast, I cannot produce that much power. The heart doesn't deliver that much uh, oxygen, it was only at 145, 150 of, of uh, beats per minute. And also the muscles don't extract that much oxygen because I don't uh, move that fast, right? I'm not warmed up. But the second one, you see, this is a much better graph uh, looking at it from a, a performance uh, point of view, right? You see, I deoxygenate immediately from the first round and then I keep my oxygenation at flat to even tending higher. This means that I'm able to deliver adequate or sufficient amount of oxygen than what my muscles need. Also, what you see here, if you would, would uh, put both graphs next to each other, during the second one, I actually increase my oxygenation during the row. I could kinda recover, or at least I could row above my uh, threshold, which I could not do the first MRAP, certainly not in the latter two rounds where I really had to push it. So. Obviously, do a warm-up, certainly before CrossFit-specific workouts, right? Where you go immediately into high intensity, where the muscles have to produce a lot of power from the get-go. How do you do that? You want to move intense on an erg, on a bike, ski, whatever, a full body workout for three to five minutes to jack up the heart rate. Then you wanna spend 10 to 15 minutes doing some, let's say, cool down, at least doing some movement specific prep before you actually start and go into the war workout. In that way, you will be able to deliver more oxygenated blood towards the, the muscles and the muscles will be able to extract also more oxygen. In addition, and that is something that most people maybe would not consider, is that specific enzymes that are used to produce energy or ATP via oxidative pathways, so pathways that require oxygen, actually require higher muscle temperatures than what you would have in rest. All right? So if you would do a warm-up, those enzymes catalyze their uh, reactions better. In that way, you can provide more energy via oxidative pathways. So the take-home message of today. By warming up properly, you're not only warming up your cardiovascular system, your heart and your lungs, like most people would suggest, but you also warm up at the local muscular level. So the muscle cells are able to extract more oxygen and produce more power at a certain heart rate. And this you can actually feel, I just experienced it myself. So that was it for today. If you like this kind of content, give us a quick like and also a subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Until the next one, ciao.